Okay, we're gonna go into um, a quick. We go a quick. We're gonna take a quick break. Um, it's not breaking news, but we're taking a quick break. Yep. Um, we're gonna bring in a guest. Um, one of the things that has been going around, come in, sit in your seat, come in. Come in. One of the things that has been discussed, and has been talking about, t- um, you know, dealing with uh, things out there and addressing truths and dealing with the truths in public. So there's been a lot of t- attacks on the current council president being a Republican. Yeah. Because he took the re- endorsement of the Republican um, line. Three days and, and before the Democrats right, issued their right, endorsement. Right, so, um, and there's been a lot said of who called and who didn't and who did what and who didn't what. So I thought best to clarify the situation, I would bring in the Repu- Mount Vernon Republican chairman, and he can tell us what happened, who did call, why certain people got, got uh, um, uh, uh, sir, uh, and, and why, why, so... Um, we're going to get to that. He's going to. Um, he has a place to be, so we're going to get into that, and then we're going to get back into the regular show. So, welcome to the show. This is your first time, Mr. Tom Keller. How are you? How are you? Welcome. I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm sorry I'm late, but it wasn't my fault. But uh, it's not I a problem. I understand. Any time between now and eight o'clock, and we're here. Right, 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 right. And that's it. And that's it. Whenever you come, I'm going to put you on as soon as you get here. Okay. Um, and I said this to you on the phone. You said, "Are you talking about me?" Now, I'm a Democrat. I mean, I mean, I'm actually I'm independent still. I didn't switch my paper. My papers worked in getting here. I never but, changed uh, but, either. But um, still but Republican. my point is, I'm not a Republican. But I've come to know you through city council meetings. I've come to know you for standing up for certain issues. I've come to know you as a gentleman of integrity. Um, we don't always agree. Um, and, and there's no problem. There's not a problem with that. I don't know why people think that two people have to agree. There should. There's no two people that agree about anything. You, you should. You know. So. I mm-hmm. want somebody who has their own mind. Um, but I do believe you have to be a man of integrity. And I figured with all the rhetoric going out, I would have you just address um, the uh, endorsement of Andre Wallace, um, maybe, you know, who called, who applied for the position, who, who interviewed for the position and, and set the record straight. Okay, am I on now? You are yeah. on. Am I cl- too close to the mic? No, no, you're, you're perfect. Good. You're perfect. Okay. okay. Um, the Democrat uh, convention took place, I think, uh, 18th or 19th of February. And uh, a couple of days later, I got the, uh, the results. And um, to my surprise, uh, Sean Patterson was, uh, was one of the candidates. And you know what happened. Um, Clyde got th- 51%, uh, Andre got 32 and the other four candidates uh, split 17%. Um, Len Sarver is, uh, is vice chair of the party, and he's very close with Leslie Zamore, as I am. Yes. I have a lot of respect and, for and Leslie. And Leslie's a good friend of the show, too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Lens, we're originally going to interview uh, Derrickson Lawrence, but Derrickson decided not to run. And uh, so then Leslie uh, s- s- publicly began to su- I Publicly, I talked him out of it. I tried my best to talk him out of that. Yeah. <laughs> began not even lie. Decided to support Sean. So, um, Len said to me, we should probably interv- interview her. And I said, okay, you, you know, the hour's late. We've got Rosemary Jaros, Conservative Party candidate. We've got Richard Thomas, the mayor, and we got Andre Wallace. And I want to give each of them 45 minutes to an hour. And I was unsure at the time. Uh, we're in now into the week of the 25th, okay? And petitions begin on Tuesday the 26th, so we're already a little behind. Democrats are all set to go on the 26th to get their signatures. So um, it was city council meeting when I, where I saw you in the they passed the budget and so forth. Yeah. And, I'm, and she spoke against the budget, I believe. And if she didn't speak against it, sh- she told me she was against it. Uh, it was Derek's and myself and her were there. And I said, Rome is burning. You're fiddling. If we don't get a budget passed, okay, the next time we can vote on it is March 13th. It takes 30 days for people to pay without penalty. We're not going to have 60 out of 111 million. That's the property tax portion of the budget. And we get 30 million in. We're not going to be able to meet payroll, and um, we don't want we don't want a control board. Anyway, so next day comes. She calls me Thursday night about 9:45. I come back from Costco, um, putting my groceries now away. Who's she? She, Sean? That's Sean. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's on the phone. I don't recognize the number, but at a weak weak point, you know, I picked up, and it was her. And uh, so uh, b- we're beating around the bush, and I said, I, I presume the reason you're calling is that you want to interview for the Republican line. And she said, yes. And I said, well, uh, I've got my schedule done. It's either going to be Saturday or Sunday. Um, I'm going to try to fit you in. Uh, let me get back to you. 
So um, we finally decided to have it at my house because we were going to have an outside venue, but we were limited to two hours, and I wanted to give all the candidates uh, enough time. So I called her on Saturday night uh, between 6 and 7, and uh, her voicemail was full. But my understanding with uh, cell phones is the number gets recorded, even though you may not know you have a missed call. Who, 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 yeah. yeah, who's called? So then uh, I call again between 8 and 9 o'clock. Same thing. Her voicemail is full. So the next morning, it's Sunday morning, and I call Len Sarva, and I said, uh, Len, you know, I haven't been able to reach her. Um, I'll, you know, I'll try again. So I tried again later in the morning, and I reached her, and she said, I, I didn't know you called. Well, okay. She said, uh, I can't make it earlier in the day. I'm going to Austin to... Uh, get a, a women's award with three other people, uh, and I'm going to be there from 2.30 to 4.30. The earliest I can get down uh, to your house is about 5.15. So I said, okay, fine. Uh, I've got uh, Rosemary Jaros at 2 o'clock, Richard Thomas at 3 o'clock, Andre at 4 o'clock. Uh, you know, come when you can. So uh, she called me at 4.30 and said she was on her way and uh, showed up about 5.15. Uh, we're running late, of course. Th these things never run on time. Yeah. People uh, go over their limit. You don't want to cut them off if there's good questions from our district leaders. So uh, sh she shows up at 5.15, calls. She's outside, and Andre's finishing up. And I walk Andre out to his car, and he even says hello to her. And, he's, and she's there with uh, Malcolm Clark. And I uh, escort, escort them in. And but, but by that time, a lot of the district leaders had left. They got there at 1.30, 1.45. And now it's 5.30. It's four hours out of their day. And um, so the, there were fewer district leaders there than had been for the previous candidates. So she spoke for about an hour, made a very impressive uh, presentation. And uh, that's it. It ended at 6.30, 6.45. And I told every candidate, I will get back to you as soon as I have the, uh, the vote. Well, the vote was 81% for Andre. 19% was split amongst the other three none of whom got double digits, okay? And I don't want to embarrass anybody by telling the specific ones. That's good enough. 19% for three, 81% for Andre. So uh, anyway, we, we went ahead. And, and by the way, the endorsement is no, uh, is no guarantee you're going to get the line. We have to go out and get the requisite number of signatures. And, uh, and we did get the requisite number. We got about 180. And we needed 125 initially, and then it was changed uh, to, to something like 93. But anyway. We got the signatures. Uh, he signed the acceptance. Uh, I signed the authorization with Denise Bendel, the, our secretary, and uh, we filed uh, filed the petitions. So, so let me let me cut to the chase. Sure. One of the things that um, black clergy and other mayoral candidates and their supporters are saying that Andre Wallace is a registered Republican. <laughs> I wish he was. <laughs> <laughs> But he isn't. <laughs> Actually, I don't, because if he was a registered Republican, he probably wouldn't win in Mount Vernon. So better that he's a registered Democrat. <laughs> right, right, right. So he's not a Republican. Now, yeah. can you explain the process? Because we try to give people much clarity. Because um, I, when I first started Black West just in 2014, I had a 20-minute meeting uh, interview with uh, Mayor Davis that turned into a four-hour conversation. Um, and during that conversation, one of the things I told him is, you know, it's apparent to me that you'll depend on the public being uninformed and misinformed. And we, it's been our goal to inform the public as much as possible. Um, that acceptance sheet that has been floating around and has been mailed to everybody that you just referred to, um, that does not say that Andre is a Republican or prove that Andre is a Republican as has been used on social media to prove. So, um the acceptance sheet th does not say he's a Republican? No, yeah, that's they, they, yes, yeah they're, say, they're showing this, yeah, saying it's, this is proof that he's, he's a, a Republican. Registered that Republican. He's a registered Republican. M my understanding is when, um, when you accept someone's line and they get a requisite number of signatures to submit to the Board of Elections, you have to sign an acceptance form, right. and that's what he did. Right. And because he's not a registered Republican, he had to sign an authorization form otherwise known as a Wilson Pakula, mm -hmm. and right. it, had to be no, it had to be notarized, and that went along with the petitions and the acceptance. Does okay. that take away him being a registered Democrat? No. 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 Now, yeah, here's a question that I've asked you early on um, a couple of years ago when I first met you, and I know the answer. Um, why does not the Mount Vernon Republican Party run candidates? 
I was talking about Damon and I were working trying to build up the Independence Party, and we were like, we would like to see this be more than a one party city, so that you know there would be more. I, and I told you to, I said, I'm going to need you to start running candidates. <laughs> you you explain why you cannot, well you well, have not. We we couldn't find a candidate to run for mayor this time around, and we haven't been able to uh, find candidates uh, over the years. And I don't know if you have this, but um, when when this criticism of Andre came out, um, I put together a memo to him about how registered Democrats running for mayor have taken other lines, exactly. working families line, Green Party, conservative, Republican. It's all listed here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you, you're welcome to it. Actually, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Uh, it goes back to 2007 when, er when, when Ernie took the conservative line. Um, 2011, uh, Maureen took the, a conservative line. Yeah, Fifteen, independence line. Yeah. And, and, and 15, um, uh, 15, Richard Thomas had the independence and the Republican line. Yeah. Um, Ruth Thompson had the um, working, families, working, working families, families line. I think, and I think Deborah Reynolds had conservative or something. Uh, Deborah yeah. Reynolds had the conservative. Yes. Uh, so there's ample examples of, uh, of that happening, even with the uh, Democrat lopsided registration. So why, now why do, why do, in your experience, why, living in Mount Vernon specifically, but why would a Democratic candidate um, interview for other people, other lines okay. in, a, in, a, in a political race? Okay, Th this, is, this is a very pragmatic thing. As you know, there's no runoff in Mount Vernon. In New York City, there's a runoff. That's something that you've been fighting for since I've been back. Right, <laughs> since 2012, right. when Ernie beat Maureen 35-34. And as an aside, she had a 100-vote lead in the machines. And then when they counted the uh, ballots, she lost by 100. Right. Because he got 80 to 90 percent of the uh, absentee and affidavit you know, paper ballots. OK. So um, th th this, this race here, I, I understand, is very close. Each of the four candidates has between 20 and 25 percent in polling. So somebody could win this with anywhere from 26 to 30 percent. And there's precedent here. In 2011, Ernie got 35, Maureen got 34, uh, Clinton got 20, uh, Johanna Edwards got 10. I might be off by a point or two for rounding purposes. Mm -hmm. In 2015, Richard got 37, Ernie got 24, Ruth Thompson got like 18 or 20, Maureen got 13, and uh, Clinton Young got 6. So when you have multiple candidates, at least three, and sometimes four, five, and six, and in this race, we almost had six. Absolutely. I mean, I, I guess we have five if you count Delia's right in. Ernie is not contesting it. So uh, I think it's, if somebody wins with 30% of the vote, that means 70% of the Democrats did not vote for that person who's exactly. likely to become the new mayor. Exactly, exactly. So um, if you have another line in November, you have a slight chance of winning. And I think that's one of the reasons Andre uh, took it for pragmatic reasons. Another reason, he's appealing to several constituencies. And the Republican Party is a constituency. That's it. And, yep. and he wants to appeal to, to that constituency. And one, way, one of the ways to do that is, 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 to <coughs> try, is to seek the Republican line, which he was successful in doing. Another reason, not a very good reason, is if, <coughs> if you have the line, somebody else can't have the line. You lock it all up. So if you, you lock it the primary, up. you won't have no contenders. Right. right. So uh, anyway, those are, th those are I think, are the reasons why someone would, uh, would want it. And, and even though <laughs> we're the second party, but everybody's a minor party in Mount Vernon except for the Democrats. You know, we have 2,500. We don't even have 3,000 registered Republicans. The Democrats have 30,000. Their number is 10, 11, 12 to 1. Um, wow. So... Is there anything I didn't ask that you wanted to shed further light on yeah, the situation? Yeah, please, please let, me, let me respond. I was at the Grace Baptist Church um, uh, campaign forum a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, all right, after the uh, campaign forum was over, Clyde Isley, according to Andre, Clyde Isley and Sean criticized him for taking the Republican line. And he said, well, both of you have sought the line, Clyde Isley in 1995 against Don, uh, John Bosco, and went to court, and Bosco won. But he sought the line. And he was backed by the Republican chair at the time, Walter Cubita. Anyway, uh, and Sean uh, sought it most recently this year. And she denied 
she denied it. So I said, okay, a couple of weeks, went, a week or two went by, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't contact her. And then uh, at the Riverside Chapel, I asked Malcolm Clark, because he was giving out literature as I was walking in, he denied it. He said it was a meet and greet, uh, social gathering, you know, whatever. <laughs> and that it was not a, a, an interview for the line. So <sighs> I'm beside myself now. I go into the Riverside Chapel. I see Sean. I get down and I ask her. They, have, they, they must have rehearsed this because they had the same she had the same answer. I said, you most certainly did interview. I accommodated you. I did Lynn Sauver and Leslie Zamore a favor by slotting you in at the end. And, and, and now you're saying this? So then I said, well, what if you got the endorsement and we went out and got the signatures? Would you have accepted the line? No, I wouldn't have. It's easy to say what you wouldn't do when you don't have it. When you don't have it. So anyway, that, that happened last, uh, you know, last Tuesday. And um, just, just one other thing about, uh, about her. I, I don't want to get off this topic, but I have to. L Leslie Zamore is a friend of mine. And the way he was treated by her at, the, uh, at Grace Baptist Church was horrible. With, um, you know, <sighs> DeCone and Collie Edwards, they don't like Leslie. And they came up with the question of uh, Joe Spezio and Leslie Zamore are of questionable character. Um, and they're both supporting you or something to that effect. And it's because she goes in and criticizes Spezio, which is her right to do. Then she gets to uh, Leslie, and she says, oh, he didn't like me uh, when he was on the planning board, and I became planning commissioner, and then went on to say, he's not supporting me financially, and um, I take my lead from Jesus. <laughs> you know, that's not even faint praise. I mean, with friends like that, who needs enemies? Mm -hmm. I, I know your time is Amen. short. Yeah. Um, Charles okay. Stern, who is part of our panel, but gave up yeah. the seat so y'all could sit down. He actually said, okay, Tom, but the Republican line, Republican line means alignment with the Republican Party for some. That's toxic right now in this <laughs> era of Trump. So it, it, I would let you address that. Don <laughs> First of all, the, Repu the Republicans have nothing to do um, with, with, with the vote on Tuesday. We can't vote on Tuesday, we, w unlike in some states where you can cross over. Uh, we hopefully will play a role in November, but, uh, but right now we don't play a role. Um, to involve Donald Trump in a mayoral election in uh, Mount Vernon is ridiculous. Yep. It's totally yep. ridiculous, yep. despite Agreed. how you feel about, uh, about Trump. If that's the best that uh, Isley and Sean can do in criticizing Andre, gosh, we're in for, pr we're in for trouble if they get elected. This oh. is ridiculous. And I didn't see this thing that went out yesterday uh, about about me and whatever. I, I'm I'm not a registered Democrat, obviously, so I didn't get the mailing, but but I heard about it. Yeah, a letter went out explaining that the Republican Party, the party of Trump, was trying to take over Mount Vernon and City Hall. <laughs> so basically, really? a vote for Andre was a vote a, vo a vote for uh, the, uh, for Donald Trump, the party of Trump, and then they showed that again that <laughs> acceptance form <coughs> is page two as proof that Andre is a Republican. People believe that. Uh, yes, if you yes, say, if you say, yes. If you say heavy, it enough, yes. wait, wait. <laughs> yes. Spezio, Spezio said for two years that Andre Wallace did not pay prevailing wages. People that work for him and people that deal with him and other people start questioning, well, is he paying prevailing? Pe like, if you say something enough, yeah. you know, again, a lot of people are uninformed and misinformed. They're just going through life. They, they got their families, they're working two jobs, they, they got kids in sports or whatever. They're trying to get through, go to the next day, prepare for the next day. They're not paying attention to a lot of what we see, you know, and, 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 they, they, and they get something like this from their mayor that you voted for. Why would you think he's lying to you? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know. I hear you. Um, I want, oh, go, ahead, uh, go ahead. So I just, I just want to repeat. Sean Patterson Howard interviewed for the line, and to deny that, is she's not telling the truth. I spent three or four hours, 12, 15 district leaders there. I'm going to have a social meet to greet at the end of the day at 530 for her. I have better things to do with my life. And there you thank have you. it, I, folks. I thank you Bam. very much for your time. And I forgot to um, introduce you to Lorraine Lopez, our resident Republican. I met you a long time ago yes. when uh, you were working for... Um, Spencer or Emma Coney? Uh, both. I work for both. Oh, both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, right, unless you, you unless you have any last words, that's I, I just thank you for your no, time I don't for, think break, I, yeah. for breaking down the facts. Thank you. Um, and I hope that helps some of the people that that have been asking the question that didn't know. And I want to give you <laughs> official <laughs> people before politics round of applause. I, I think I, I think Democrats know they don't have to uh, get it from me to vote for Andre Wallace on uh, on Tuesday. He he's the one that's been. Um, fighting this administration over the last few years. These other two people are Johnny come lately. One guy is Rip Van Winkle for 20 years. We haven't heard from him. Oh. I guess Reggie, Reggie Lafayette must have gone through that his Rolodex. Better. I ain't never thought of that one. That was a good one. <laughs> went through his Rolodex and found that Ernie was damaged goods. And said, oh, this guy Clyde Eisley, he's a decent guy. We'll run him for mayor. And Sean, um, I'm, I'm very disappointed. I thought she was a person of character and, and what she's done uh, to, to me and the Republican Party and Andre Wallace over the last last few weeks is, 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 is very disappointing, very sad. And in closing, um, uh, gentlemen, former Mount Vernon police officer John R. Jones, he said that you were heated. And he um, had to calm you down a little bit at Riverside. He said you were definitely heated. He was co-signing what you said. He was so right. He's so right. I'm glad I ran into Johnny Jones on the way out because <laughs> I needed some fresh air and uh, a drink of water and um, a cold face cloth to uh, prevent me from uh, having a heart attack or... Uh, Whatever, stroke. Well, you take care of yourself, um, right. and, and, and thank you as always, and, and you are a wealth of information. Anytime I call you or we talk, I, I learn something. Look, maybe, maybe we can talk in, in October when uh, there'll be a person on the Republican line in November, and um, there'll be a, a general election race. I, absolutely. Definitely, I, I, I extend that invitation right and, now. And, so. and even if Andre wins, you can be sure there's going to be more than one write-in. Delia is already going <coughs> to do a write-in. And I suspect <laughs> so one or more of the other candidates will try to do a write-in. That's just my feeling. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. If Andre has both the Republican and Democrat lines. Right, right. So. I wish he had the Independence line, but. Yeah, yeah we don't even know. Independence that, line yeah. is MIA this year. Yeah, um, it's MIA. <laughs> it's MIA. Well, <laughs> yeah. I